This is Wednesday's wild card topic where I pull from one of the books and uh, we go for it. We go uh, just riff on whatever topic we land on. And if we've already landed on the topic and weeks gone past, then we'll choose a new one. And I don't have the printed copies of the expanded version of Take Back Your Weekends yet, which by the way now has a subtitle, uh, Take Back Your Weekends, Stress Less, Do More, Be Happier. And that will release on June the 8th. So just getting the final touches on that. So what I will do is, because I still haven't been able to find my um, my business card book, like from business cards to business relationships, personal branding and profitable networking made easy. It's in one of the boxes because I've moved, as you can see the new background. Uh, so let's go to this book. Let's go to the old uh, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks book. And I will pull a topic. By the way, I was kind of hoping to do the other book because the topic I really wanted to do today uh, and that I'm not doing because it's Wild Card Wednesday is about ageism and succeeding at any age, whether you're on the young end of the spectrum or on the more experienced end of the spectrum. And the reason that topic is on my mind is because I keynoted the beginning of uh, the Age Friendly Networks Conference today and it was the opening keynote, but they're actually doing it over the course of four weeks. So normally it would be a full day uh, conference and we couldn't be in person due to lockdown. So I had that going on and I just thought that was so fun, like to talk with the, uh, the seniors. Yeah, they were really into it too, which is great because it's the human experience that I talk about, right? Like it's, we all feel these different emotions and struggle with certain things and you know, so I, I think the keynotes work no matter who the audience is. And I was really grateful to have that opportunity. So if you are from that organizing committee and here today, by all means, I am grateful that you had me in as your keynote speaker. All right, let's go for it. Where are we gonna go? Oh, too far. No, let's start here. <laughs> Powering through in action. Okay, so I landed on page 169, which is the end of the chapter. So the way this book, by the way, I want to rewrite the book. So that's on my next thing because it needs a few edits. But here's the thing about this is, you know, there's this old saying called, uh, or the old saying is, if you're going through hell, keep going. And the problem with that is like just powering through can actually lead to more burnout and is probably not always the best answer. So there's certain times when we just have to allow ourselves a little bit of grace to take a break, to recharge, to not keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And I'll, I'll have a quick peruse of the chapter and just be sure I, I know what the point is that I was trying to make because I sometimes have different opinions on these really catchy titles. <laughs> I created for all these chapters. Um, okay. Do you allow your just okay. <laughs> so the idea was actually I think I was promoting the power through. So see this book needs to be rewritten because it's a few years old. So the idea of just keep going, and that was my my approach to life, right? Like I was I had a goal, I was going to keep going until the work was done, and then I would collapse. And my rhythm was I would work, 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 go to all the events, went to 241 events in one year. I don't do that. But also on top of that, writing the column and running an organization and having a social life and volunteering and, 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 and. And so I just thought busy was a way of life. I thought that was the badge of honor I had to wear to belong or to give value. And so I would go and then my body would collapse and I would just be exhausted. And then I'd spend like a day or two on the couch and then I'd get up and keep going and start all over again. And that rhythm of these high, 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 high intensity with a crash on the end, 
I don't believe is healthy for a couple reasons. Number one, when you're in the go-go, it's all momentum. And I love momentum when it's wisely chosen. But it was like, I wasn't, it was just a blur. Like, I don't know if I was really in touch with what I wanted to do or what really felt good or, you know, I did like the whole uh, concept of stopping to smell the roses or actually like looking up at the trees. Like, you know, me, I'm always out like, look at the leaves, <laughs> you know, like look up as a, you know, a way of living now. And back then I wouldn't even know there were trees around me, let alone been anywhere where there would have been trees. Right. It was just go, 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 go. And when I wasn't going, I felt guilty and like I was failing and I wasn't succeeding. And so I think we get caught in that trap. So number one, the reason I don't think it's healthy to keep powering through is that reason. The, the busy that when you're in the top can actually feel uh, just not, not have any like enjoyment. I think it can suck the joy out of the, the things we're actually choosing to do. But then the other piece is these crashes are so unhealthy, right? Like it's when your body gets to a point where like, I can't do anymore. And it's not now that I don't get to that point because I still have pain and I have some other things that, that cause some tiredness sometimes. But it's, we've got to, if we're going to crash, I don't like if we're crash. Um, if we're going to take that break, I think it's better to do spurts of, intense activity followed by spurts of low intensity activity so that we can be more even and by kind of doing high, low, high, low, high, low more frequently, we actually are better serving us in our body. We're harnessing the good stress and we're recharging so we can show up and be even better when it's time to go. Now, what I was talking about in this chapter was this, I would look at, and this, you have to know the chapter before, adversities, obstacles, and tasks. And so when we face an adversity, we have very little control over what's going on. And we need the ability, we need the space, the capacity to heal and grieve and process the biggest emotions of our life. And yet the work still has to get done. So from every adversity comes new obstacles. And those obstacles are the things we need to solve. And so often we get caught up in the obstacles and instead of looking at them objectively, momentum just takes us in and we, and we you know, try to find a solution before we've done a proper assessment of what's exactly happening and the self-awareness, how am I responding to it or potentially making it harder to solve. And if it sounds like I just roll that off my tongue, it's because I say it all the time when I'm giving my speeches and I talk through this stuff with my clients. So it's, it's very natural to me. But here's the thing. So if we know we need space to grieve and heal from life's real biggest emotions and from every uh, adversity comes new obstacles. So from every obstacle, the solution becomes the tasks and the tasks are where we have the highest level of control. And so powering through an action, the context for this was seeing and playing with this, this um, equation of here's the adversity. The example in the book, of course, is my physical pain. It meant I couldn't drive and that created a new obstacle. I called my mom. She ended up being my chauffeur. That was the task in action. There were other things like sitting was a real problem for a very long time. So I wrote this book. I wrote my last book. Um, not so much this Take Back Your Weekends book, but the one on uh, business cards to business relationships and the how to build an ultimate network and uh, this one and the busy is a bad excuse, I wrote all of those books lying down, right? So that was how I managed to keep the task going while addressing the obstacle while living through an adversity. Okay, so that's what this is about. Let's see who we have here. Lori, hello, nice to see you. 
uh, recognizing your own energy capacity to keep a more even activity level in spite of what others are doing or what we perceive as necessary to succeed is challenging. Yes, and it's interesting that you bring up how other people uh, energies and perceiving them and other people's expectations. And if I were to live based on other people's expectations, I would, I would still be on the same loop. The work, 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 crash. Work, 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 crash. And at some point we have to set the boundaries and we have to say, you know what, this is the, what my body needs. This is, this is my answer. And for me lately, because I've had a lot of things going on and I can definitely feel uh, the impact of that, right? All of the, you know, those of you who've been here, you know, you know, stories. I, I've been going to bed really early, like nine o'clock, 9.30 in bed, lights out. And that has been really important for me because you know, and, and then I have friends who want to talk at 10 o'clock at night. Well, I can't, right? Like it's, it's knowing what you need. And this is where being compassionately curious about all of your, uh, like what you need and your self-awareness is so critical. And then you can make a decision and say, okay, this is what I need. How does that relate to the people around me? And do I need to adjust accordingly? Right? Like, do I want to listen to them and, and go for that? So a really good point that you've brought up. Love that. All right, Greg, what are you saying today? I think one of the issues with powering through is that not only is it not sustainable, correct, uh, but you never get into the zone where time flies because of productivity. I think that's what you were saying. Yes. And when we get into our zone, like, because like that sweet spot of performance and productivity is found at the intersection of a goal, a deadline and accountability, but it can't be achieved in a prolonged state. So we need to do it in short bursts so that we can ride our own natural rhythms and to the rhythm conversation as well is we need to know what our rhythms are. So powering through in action. Keeping going on this topic on our Wild Card Wednesday. Um, so chronic state of exhaustion. So that was another thing. So I think what I was doing in this chapter was trying to, because I haven't read the book, as you know, I just pull this out every, every week. Once a week, I pull it out and then we riff on it. But the constant state of exhaustion, chronic pain is notorious for interrupting your sleep, right? 100% and making you tired all day long. Like I've always said, when you have chronic pain, you start your day, if you have capacity like this, and you have a, a severe chronic pain, you actually start your day taking upwards of 40% of your day, some days 70%, some days 10%, out of the equation. Like You just don't have access to it because your body is fighting the pain. And so the more we can make friends with pain, and not like fight it, the, the more capacity we can fall, we can create back. But like, even with the sleep, like getting, um, a good night's sleep. So this was the part of the equation, right? Adversity, the pain, one of the obstacles is sleep is interrupted and exhaustion. And then the task ultimately became, you know, going to a sleep study, figuring out if there's anything I can do. Are there like, you know, getting rid of caffeine out of my life? like a whole bunch of different things to try to improve the sleep. So that's how we can power through while still honoring the reality of adversities that require us to heal, tackling those obstacles, which we need to solve and doing our tasks, which we need to do without any fanfare, because every time we add a little fanfare, it steals capacity from our day. And what we're trying to do is, generate our capacity or amplify our capacity. All right. So that was fun. I always enjoy this, you know, where I can just go to one of my chapters and try to figure out what I was talking about when I wrote the book. Like I said, I really want to redo this one, but I've just finished this book. It is uh, Take Back Your Weekends, 
Let's see if I have. Nope, not that one. Hold on. Where's the book? Close with books. There it is. Oh, I don't have the new title on there. But it is, it says, take back your weekends. And then on the bottom, it says, um, stress less, do more, be happier, which I'm super excited about because that's what I want for everybody. I want you to be able to be like, whatever's going on around you, you can still reset, emotionally regulate and be in flow. That's what I hope for you. Because, you know, it's not like right before I come on, I might not be dealing with an obstacle. I just was actually. And I was like, okay, I got to reset and then get in the move and become present and do this, right? Like I'm practicing this stuff every day, all day long. So on that note, I think we're going to end because it is uh, Wednesday wisdom with a wild card topic. And because I've been powering through so far today with the keynote meeting, super, super excited, two big things coming up that I will let you know when they are announced. Uh, it's time for me to go and recharge, me to go and take my own advice and do a break and a reset. And then I will come back and maybe I'll work tonight or maybe I, I won't. I don't know. It's like when you do the things you got to do in a real hurry and really compress time frame then uh, you, you get all this capacity back to do whatever you want to do. Bye. Okay, have the best rest of today. Thank you for being here. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Remember, we're doing Monday through Thursday, 3.15 p.m. And I will, uh, oh, tomorrow's topic is going to be procrastination, as was determined in a talk yesterday or the day before.